Hello everyone, I'm Akhilesh Kumar Shivasto. Uh, in today's lecture, we will discuss about the programming of the hashing. You already must have an idea about what the hashing is and what the direct address table is. And uh, I will just give you a brief introduction about the direct address table. And then we will switch over to the programming of the hashing. So for example, let's say we have been given some of the elements and we have to find out the count of the number of uh, the elements in the given sequence. For example, if I have the elements like 1, 2, 4, 3, 1, 2, 0, and 1. So this, these are the numbers that have been given to us. And if we have to find out what are the elements which are repeated in this and what are the elements which are not repeated in this, then we can perform the counting of these elements using the direct address table. So for example, in the given set of the elements, 4 is the largest element. So we create a DAT, which is a direct address table, which is a simple array and that has a size of 4 plus 1 means the 5. By taking the size of the 5 has a logic of like we have to have the index number 4 in the array and we should have the index of 0 also. So that is why we are taking the size of the array as 4 plus 1 that is 5. In case the largest element in the given sequence of the elements are n, in that case, we will take it as n plus 1. So we are taking here for the example, the DAT of size 5. In that case, we will have the indexes from 0 to 4. Initially, we declare every element of the DAT as 0. This represents that or this depicts that the 0 is appearing 0 times, 1 is appearing 0 time, 2 is appearing 0 time, 3 is appearing 0 time, and 4 is appearing 0 time. Now, we take the first element and go to the index number 1 in the DAT and increase the count from 0 to 1. Next, we take the element 2 and go to the 2 index in the DAT and increase the count by 1. Similarly, we go to the 4 index and then we increase the count to 1. We pick the element 3 and then we go to the 3 index and increase this count by 1. So the count at the 3 index becomes 1. Then we have the element 1. So we go to the index 1 and update the count from 1 to 2. Similarly, we go to the index 2 and we update the count from 1 to 2. We go to 0 index and update the count to 1. We go to index number 1 and update the count to 3. Now after doing this, we have an idea about which of the element uh, is repeated and which of the element is not repeated. So the DAT, uh, if, if you traverse the DAT once again, and then you will have an idea about which are the elements which are repeated. So we are just writing the contents of the DAT again. In the zero index, we have one. At the one index, we have three. At two index, we have two. At three index, we have one. At four index, we have one. So now you can see that if you traverse this DAT, at the zero index, the value is one. It means that the element zero has not got repeated. Then if you go to index number one, the data value is three. It means that the element one has got repeated. So you can just simply print that the element one has got repeated. Similarly, if you go to index number two, the data value is two. Then you can say that the data value two has actually got repeated. Similarly, you go to index number three, the data value is one. It means the element three is not repeated. Similarly, if you go to index number four, the data value is one that depicts that the element number one has not got, element number four has not got repeated. So there are only two elements which are repeated in the given sequence of the numbers, which are one and two only. So now this is the concept of the DAT wherein by the element, you are directly going to an index and updating the count. So the direct address table simply specifies that we have a table wherein we can approach to the index directly. Now the hashing is a similar concept. The concept of the hashing is you have a key, that key may be large, but when you apply the hash function to this key, this gives us the location and this location has to be unique. Let's say we have a hash table and in this hash table, there are various locations, various cells. And when you apply this hash function to the key value, we get a location L, let's say this location is L. 
then you can go to the location L and you can store this element at uh, location L. So the position of the element K becomes L in this case. Now, this is the process of the storage. But when you will try to retrieve the element from the hash table, the same, same concept will be applied, meaning that you will take the hash function and you'll, you will apply the hash function on the key K and finally you will get a location L. So you go to location L and access this element, meaning that while storage, we are doing a constant step to store the element, to find the location and store the element. Similarly, while retrieving also, you are performing the constant effort and you are able to get that element from there. So if, in case we try to compare this hashing with the other searching techniques that we have already studied, meaning that the linear search which used to require order of n time in the worst case, the binary search which, which was requiring a log n time in the worst case. But in the case of the hashing, we are obtaining the element in the constant time. So the hashing is a very useful concept wherein we have to uh, is, is speed up the storage and the retrieval of the elements. For example, in the compilers, when you're dealing with a large program and there are several variables uh, in, in the program, there are various tokens in the program, then you store those tokens in the uh, symbol table and while execution of the program, you pick the elements from the symbol table or the compiler picks up the element from the symbol table in the constant time. So the symbol table is actually the example of the hash table. Now we already have an idea about what the hashing is. So let's try to uh, take some examples. And with those examples, we'll try to understand that how we store the elements in the hash table. So there are some standard functions defined with respect to the data structures. We can say that we have a division hash function. The division hash function, the mid square function or the mid square hash and the folding hash. So these are the very basic functions that we usually use for the storage of the elements in the hash table. For example, uh, if you are going with the division hash, let's say the table size is 100, it means there are 100 element that elements that can come in the hash table. So let's say the table size is 100. So this is the hash table. And uh, in this hash table, there are 100 locations. It means that the indexes of this array or the hash table will vary from 0 to 99. In this case, you can say that the largest index which is possible for this array or the largest location which is possible in this array or in the hash table is 99, which is a two digit number. So we will consider that every location in this array or the hash table will be of two digits. So when we are applying the division hash function, then we have to ensure that every location is found for the two in two digits. So the basic method could be like you have a key, you perform the modulus of that key with the hundred, then you will get a location and that location will be of two digits that will be in between zero, zero and 99. Let's take an example. For example, let's say we have one, two, three, four. So now when you perform the division of this number and will you take the modulus of this number with 100, you will get 34. And you can say that 34 is the location of the key 1, 2, 3, 4 in the hash table. Similarly, if you take another example, let's say you have 2, 3, 7, 7. Then if you take up the modulus of this number with 100, you will obtain 77. And you can say that the location of this number is 77 in the hash table. So 2, 3, 7, 7 is the Num, uh, 2377 can be stored at the index number 77. So the method by which we are storing these elements with the same method we can obtain or we can retrieve the elements whenever you require to search this element from the hash table. So this is a simple division hash, but this comes with uh, uh, some of the problems. For example, we found that 1234 has a location 34. Similarly, if you have the element 2334, and you take the modulus of this number with 100, you will again get a 34. It means that a number is already stored at the location number 34. And when you're trying to store the element 2334, this will be a collision because this also has the same location. So to avoid this collision, 
we try to resolve this by finding a divisor which does not have many factors. For example, the 100 has many factors. It has the factor 2, it has a factor 4, 5, 10, 5, uh, 20, 25, 50. All these are the factors of the number 100. But if you try to find out a number which has a least factor, it means you select a prime number and you divide a number by that or you divide the key by that, it is least probable that you will get any repeated remainders. So we must find out a prime number which is near to 100. So you are going to find out a prime number which is near to 100. And if you divide your number with that, then you will be getting a remainder. And for any other number or any other key, it will be least probable that you will get the same remainder. So when you try to find out the, uh, find out the prime number nearest to 100, you try to backtrack and find out the prime numbers. For example, 100 is not a prime number. 99 is not a prime number. 98 is not a prime number, but 97 is a prime number. So the nearest prime number to 100 is 97. You perform all the modulus operations with this 97. For example, you had a first key, 1, 2, 3, 4. You take its modulus with 97. Whatever is the answer, let's say the answer is A, you will store the element at A location. Similarly, if you take up 2, 3, 3, 4, then take its modulus with 97. The answer will be B. You try to store your element at B location. Similarly, you have a 2, 3, 3, 7, the another number that we have to store. Then you take up the modulus of this number with 97. Let's say C is the location of this number and you store this number at the C location. So the division hash function has a modification that we are not going to uh, take up its modulus with directly the table size, but a prime number which is near, near nearest to the table size, we will take up the modulus with that. So uh, having known uh, this uh, concept, let's try to implement this in the form of the C++ program. So here is a program wherein uh, we are going to design a division hash function. In the division hash function, there are two elements which is given to us. One is the key for which we have to find out the location in the hash table, and there is a table size. So before finding out the location of this number in the table size, you must find out the nearest prime. So here is a uh, nearest prime algorithm or the nearest prime function. We'll try to define this uh, later. So this nearest prime uh, function will find out the nearest prime to the table size. And NP is a variable wherein we are storing the nearest prime. Finally, we are taking the modulus of this key with the nearest prime, nearest prime NP, and is storing that in L, and we're returning that only using this division hash function. So let's try to find out the nearest prime. So here is a function that finds out the nearest prime. And uh, in this, uh, the table size is given. Table size is a number, obviously, and we will try to find out the nearest prime to table size. It may so happen that the table size itself is a prime number. So we are starting our discussion or we are trying to do our computations for finding out the prime number from the TS only. So we have taken TS and let's store it in some I. And uh, you know that the last prime number can be up to two only. So you are decreasing, let's, let's say the table size is uh, 10. So in that case, you will move from 10, then to nine, then to eight, then to seven up to the time when you get the first prime number. So the last number that you can check is up to two only. So after taking up a number or selecting a number, you take its divisions up to square root i. If it is not divisible by any of the number uh, from two to SQ, SQRT i, it means that is a prime number. And if any of the number in between divides uh, this number, that will not be a prime number. So we are actually uh, doing this step. This is a very simple uh, prime number finding algorithm or the prime number finding function through which you are actually finding out a prime number. So whenever we find uh, any number which is a prime, then you say that uh, this number is prime. Otherwise, you will say that it is not. So what you have to do, if you find out a prime number in between, let's say you Pick a number TS, fine. And you start taking his divisor from two to SQRTN. 
and this number is not able to divide any of the number or, or sorry the j is not able to divide any of the number uh, or a, in any of the variable that we have selected for example if we have uh, selected the 97 then there will be no number which will be able to divide this so we are taking under root 97 which will be approximately 10 so we are going to check all the devices from 2 to 9 there will be no number which will be able to divide this 97 so this condition will never be true so if this condition is not true then j will be j will obviously be greater than sqrti so why j will be greater than sqrti because we have taken the divisions of this number up to sqrti and then we are again incrementing this j and then this condition gets failed fine so the loop runs for the complete uh, uh, loop runs up to its complete lifetime and then j gets incremented and j becomes greater than the sqrti then we will say that the i number is a prime number which is our target number so when we find out this uh, nearest prime that is i we will move to the calling function that is the division hash and in the division hash we have called this function and the nearest prime has got stored in this np fine so we already have understood this let's design the main through which we will test this function so let's take a number from our side and we will call the division hash function and we'll test that let's say one two three four is the first number for which we are going to find out the division hash function Similarly, let's call the division hash function for 2, 3, 3, 5. So for both of these, whatever is the answer we obtain from the division hash function, we will print that. So we're going to print whatever value is returned by the division hash function. Fine. So we want uh, that uh, the new answer should be printed in the new line. So you're applying just a slash n or the end l. Both of both of these will work. Okay. Fine. So there are uh, two parameters which are required in this division hash function. So we are passing the key to be stored along with the table size. So you can see that for the first value, the uh, location is 70. And for the second one, the location is 7. We can change this data also. And let's test it for that one, 4566. Six. So 4565. The first one remains the same. We have changed the second one. So for the first one, the location is 70. And for the second one, the location is 6. So I hope uh, you must have understood about uh, the division hash function. In the next lecture, we will have a look at the other hash functions and we'll try to code them. Thanks for watching this video.